there's been other studies showing that sulforaphane can cause immediately after after 24 hours can cause you to excrete harmful potential harmful carcinogens like benzene and acrolein by up to like 60 percent so this is crazy i remember that now do you think so this is like what's found in air pollution right yes i mean if you're a smoker it's found in your cigarettes but i mean air pollution is a is a major uh source of benzene yes a couple questions there one okay let's say i take this sulforaphane i'm excreting all this crap out of my body That we can clearly measure, right? Like, let's say I continue to do this and I keep getting tested day after day. Is there a point where the body is kind of like detoxed and all this crap's out of it? Or is this something that just continues to go on because it's built up so long in the body? Oh, great question. I think that has to do with the exposure. So these studies that were done, there's been more than one study done on the excretion of benzene. Most of them are done in China uh, for the simple reason that there's a huge air pollution yeah. problem in China. And so so you can imagine, and this is always the case for any sort of clinical trial you're doing. It's always nice. You'll see more robust results if you have a starting population uh, with something that you need to fix, right? So, right. so like, yeah, if you're trying to lower triglycerides, you want a population of people that don't already have low triglycerides, you want them to have high and then see if you can lower them, right? So the same goes for like benzene. I mean, these people are being exposed to benzene daily. So it probably really depends on the exposure. And these days, you know, and if you live in an urban area, you're being exposed to it, unfortunately. I mean, it's just tons of studies coming out on, on air pollution. Yeah, that would be a fun study to do, right? Just to see if it kind of like finally gets out of your system and then how long it takes before it builds back up. Yeah. Well, it, you know, part of the um, mechanism by which, you know, I sort of haven't gone into everything and do this, it would take too much time. But part of the mechanism by which this is happening is that sulforaphane activates a very, very important pathway involved in longevity called the NRF2 pathway. And this basically what this master regulator gene does is it, um, it when it gets active, it, it goes around and finds all these genes that have a very specific sequence of DNA in them called an antioxidant response element, it binds to it, and it like either turns them on or off depending on the gene. It's, it's kind of elegant that, you know, basically sulforaphane does this and that, you know, it basically is the switch on for this whole system. And, the, and clearly it's meant to happen. There's like identifiable sequel, sequ- sequence of DNA in tons and tons of genes that this master regulator will recognize and bind to. I mean, it's crazy. You just, it's super crazy to think about. Anyways, part of what it's doing is it's like turning, it's uh, increasing the, um, the, what are called phase two detoxification enzymes. And those are responsible for detoxifying potential carcinogens and a variety of other harmful compounds. It also turns off what are called phase one biotransformation enzymes, which are enzymes that can actually take a pro-carcinogen and convert it into an actual carcinogen. So you actually want those mm. turned down. So it does all sorts of interesting things. 